future. Well, you know about retro ghetto, collecting and playing retro. Street Fighter on the Nintendo, I'm a veteran at this, not a pro. Lock into the retro ghetto, come and have a look around in the ghetto. We got Sonic and Staples Seto, lock into the retro ghetto. Uh. Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Ghetto Vlog. I am joined with my co-host, Mini Ghetto. Uh, we're actually in Leicester, De Montfort University. I'm here for an event I've never been to before. It's called the National Brick Events, as you can probably guess by the title. It's like a Lego exhibition. I don't know what to expect. I don't know if it's just going to be like a room full of fantastic builds to look at or if it's going to be full of stores in which you can buy Lego. Hopefully both, because I'm hoping I can add to my Lego army whilst I'm here, of course. And yeah, I've brought the family with me. I'm excited to see what's here. Are you excited? I think so. Let's go and take a look. Very busy in here, very warm, but after hunting high and low, we found a few new recruits for the ghetto army. Um, yeah, man, really enjoyed it. <laughs> okay, so with the Lego convention done, some new recruits added to the army. Um, on the way back was the town of Beaumont Lees in Leicestershire. Last time I came here, I was really impressed with the CEX, so I mean, when in Rome, uh, it'd be rude not to, right? So. Let's go see what CEX has got. Okay, and as you can see, back in the 3.0, and it's actually been uh, a couple of days since the LEGO convention. Um, I've had a rare couple of days off from filming and editing. I can't remember the last time. Certainly having more than one day off from either filming or editing. 
Uh, it's been a long time, but uh, basically I was waiting on some games to arrive for the Wednesday's video, which didn't arrive in time. So I thought, you know what, rather than rush a video out um, or sort of make a video that my heart wasn't in, I thought I'll just have a bit of time off. So I had a couple of days and you know what, it was great. Spent a lot of time with the family, the kids, and of course, played a lot of games, which we'll get to very shortly actually. Um, but yeah, the Lego convention, it was something very different for me. Having never been to anything like that, I didn't know what to expect. It was really good seeing everything. I really enjoyed it and little man loved it because obviously he's into Lego and yeah, from that point of view, it was great. But the only thing I would say is as an experience, it was a little bit hampered by how busy it was. It was just like you could barely move and it was dead warm in there. Um, it got to that point where after I'd done like two laps, I was ready to get out. Right? It was so hot. It was so sweaty. There was loads of like children, adults, just almost too many people in this small area, right? But um, as I say, I did a lot of digging high and low to find quite a few additions to the Lego army. You can just about see it there. Now, it was as I feared. I thought there might be a bit of a tax. Sometimes when you go to these conventions, um, there's a price increase. So it's almost like, you know, they know people are going to want to buy stuff while they're there. So the prices go up. And I'm not the sort of person that's going to pay over eBay prices for anything anywhere. That just doesn't make any sense to me. So... I was able to do a bit of haggling. Again, a very different sort of um, vibe, a different kind of feel. When I was trying to negotiate with people, some of the people I was negotiating with on the stalls, they looked at me gone out when I like, asked if you could do a deal. Whereas, you know, game fairs, toy fairs, it's almost like standard that you're gonna get a deal, you're gonna try, you're gonna have a bit of barter, a bit of a haggle. Didn't seem like that with the Lego crowd. Very different crowd, right? Um, some people were borderline rude, like, no, that's the price. And it's like, okay, no worries. And just moved to another store. But like I say, really good experience to see it all. Uh, and a good family day out, right? Because, um, as I say, little man loved it. Uh, obviously, Mini Ghetto is a bit too young. But, uh, yeah, let's look at what I came back with then, shall we? Um, so, I bought... I'll show you the main one first, so the more expensive figure. So this is... I don't know the actual names for these. I always forget like the different names but basically this is one of the variations of a roman i don't know if this is a commandia I'm not sure but uh, anyway this is an expensive figure so all the other ones i saw on the day and if you go on ebay like 20 25 pounds uh, i managed to get this one for 50 uh, and uh here he is so this is the only one of these i've got with a shield uh, so i'd like to get some shields if i can because i do have two others of these but they don't have the shields but as you guys will know, I'm all about symmetry, right? Um, as the army grows, I will change the display. It won't always be like a lineup, which needs to be symmetrical. Hopefully, we'll get like a battle scene going or something cool like that down the line. But for now, uh, with it being like a lineup, I do like the symmetry. So, yeah, that was a £15 minifigure, uh, which might sound crazy to some people. But I saw minifigures there that were like £100 plus. Like some of the Star Wars stuff. Yeah, crazy, man. Um, I got a couple of cheaper figures. These do have accessories. Again, I don't know exactly what they're called, uh, the official Lego names for them, but to me, they just look like different variants of sort of like gladiators or something. Some sort of warriors, which I think kind of fit the theme. I've already got a couple of these. And another nice one that I got was uh, what I assume is a gladiator, right? Uh, and again, they've all got weapons. They're just in the bag. Um, so there's this guy with a cool helmet. So yeah, I came away with four minifigures for the army. They cost me 30 quid. Um, and like I say, I, I had to really search hard, high and low, to get figures for less than eBay prices. But I was happy what I came away with. A uh, little man got a load of stuff, load of minifigures and bits and pieces. So he's been happy making his own thing because he's that age and he's very creative. So he sort of likes to build his own thing. Much to my annoyance at times, you know, when you buy him a set and he's like putting Hulk's head on. Um, Iron Man's body or something. I'm sitting there on Christmas Day like, are you sure you don't want me to help you build it? And he's like, no, and he's building his own thing. But it's good that he's got creativity, right? Let, let him let him get on with it. But yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit grating. <laughs> Some of the creations, I think, oh man. Just anyway, <laughs> let kids be kids, right? Let him enjoy his Lego. So that was that. That was the Lego fair. It was all good. And as you saw, we flew to Beaumont Lees from there. Had to go and check out the local CX. There wasn't really anything for me. 
I did pick up one game. Um, I picked up uh, a PS3 Essentials Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 2. I already own this, but um, I picked this up simply because there's a lot of ghetto gang members that are going for the Essentials set. Um, there's always Essentials chat going on on the Discord, and honestly, it's such a great group of people on that chat. I'm very fortunate um, in that aspect, and uh, you know, there's a lot of people sending each other and helping each other out. So I picked this up knowing that somebody would want it. And lo and behold, uh, one of the guys on there needs this. So I'm going to send that to him for his collection. Um, so yeah, uh, just sort of helping out fellow collectors really. And that's what it's all about, right? So yeah, man, I uh, was happy to be able to do that. And also, I've come back to a parcel. Uh, I think I know what this one is. Um, so this is from a friend of the channel, Matt. Uh, Matt actually reached out to me once before and very generously sent me his copy of Spec Ops The Line. I think Matt's sending out his collection. I don't think he's sort of collecting Xbox or 360. Um, and so he's helping me out with my collection. And this is a good time for me to talk about what I've been doing the last couple of days gaming wise. So I'm still playing uh, the latest Prince of Persia. I'm actually getting somewhere with that. I finally beat that boss that I was stuck on. Um, so I think I'm getting towards halfway, but that's very much my sort of bedtime game. So. That's sort of like on my Switch, play for half an hour, an hour or so in an evening. But I've been putting more time into Spec Ops The Line, so shout out to Matt. Um, that game, man, it's it's hard to sort of describe it too much without giving spoilers. The reason that game never sort of came onto my radar was because it just looks to be, if you look at the cover art, you would think it's just another military shooter on a, a system and an era that's just got a plethora of military shooters. So it was something that very much went under my radar. And then when the price shot up overnight, when there was the sort of licensing, uh, music licensing issue, there was a lot of people talking about how good the game is. And then you start getting FOMO, right? Um, so yeah, I was really happy to have received it from Matt. And uh, I just, I think, who did I see recently? I think it was Dylan at Hyper Trigger X talking about when he gets a gift. It almost gives him that impetus to play it, like to put it at the top of the backlog, almost... Like, you know, if someone sends you something, you don't want to just shove it on a shelf and forget about it. And it was kind of that mentality with receiving Spec Ops The Line. So I put it in, played it. First couple of chapters, I'm thinking it was decent fun. It was just another military shooter. But then things happen that, again, I'm not going to put any spoilers out there. But if you can play this game, play it. If you've already played it, you will know what I'm talking about. There's a couple of scenes in this game that I don't think I'll ever forget. Like, some of the most shocking scenes I've seen in any video games. And... It kind of got me thinking, like, it's a strange one, isn't it? Like, people have a lot of things to say somewhat negative uh, and understandably about games and physical media and how that digital content's been taken off. So you can only buy the physical product and the price goes up. But if that hadn't come to the forefront, had I not been made aware of this game via those reasons, then I probably would never have had the intrigue to play it. And as a result... Um, I'm playing it and absolutely loving it. So it's just funny how things work out, right? That kind of FOMO and yeah. Uh, but yeah, getting back to the point, if you haven't played Spec Ops The Line, definitely do so if you get the opportunity because yeah, I'm really enjoying it. And I'm going to try and finish that game tonight if I can. Um, so yeah, this was sent by Matt. So Matt reached out to me after that and he said, I've also come across this game. I don't think you have it in your collection. I'd love to send it to you. Uh, he wouldn't take any money or anything like that. Um, yeah, just top guy. It's much appreciated. And this is a game that has also been on my Xbox 360 wish list. Uh, it's quite high on that wish list actually. So very, very happy to receive this. Very well packaged. Uh, and that is Lollipop Chainsaw. Yeah, just one of them games that I hear a lot of positive things about. I mean, the cover art's going to grab your attention, right, if nothing else. So very much intrigued. And uh, as I aforementioned, this is one of them games that's going to lightly boost its way up into the backlog. So once again, a massive shout out to Matt. Uh, yeah, just much appreciated, my friend. And uh, yeah, really, really happy to be adding that to my 360 collection. And yeah, I feel like we can sort of like kick off this week's vlog now, right? Um, as always, stacked, loads coming up. Uh, after my gaming session tonight, tomorrow morning we are cracking on, finally we're getting the PS2 TV housed, uh, we're hopefully going to be able to get that um, shelf that it's currently sat on, put on like an extendable unit, so yeah, looking forward to getting that done, we're of course going to be going out on a game hunt and loads more, so <laughs> let's get into it.
Okay, so it is Operation PS2 TV, finally. Um, so as you can see, we've cleared out most of the games that are in that area. One of the uh, headaches I've got is getting this plug extension back up through this hole. It's easier to get things down the hole, right, than back up. So we're going to wrap some wire around it and then sort of pull it back up so we can bring it here, cut out a new hole, and then have the plug located just behind the PS2 TV. So these are the brackets that we bought. These are going on the shelf itself. Um, and as I say, these are extendable. So it should be able to come out sort of roughly about there. The PS2 TV at an angle, I should be able to sit here in my seat and then uh, have the perfect playing angle for the PS2 TV. That's uh, in theory at least. So we're drilling through to make a small hole on the, yeah. on the next shelf, so we stop it from having a gap. Stop the screw, stop the two from pushing, because when it does, the screw goes in, it'll start to part it. Yeah. You see, like there, you got that. Yeah. You don't want to make it worse. No. Proper job. Because I'm not doing it. <laughs> okay, so that's both the brackets in place. What's next? Measuring this. Yep, so we're going to have to take this down. Yep. Whatever. So, what we'll do is we'll just cut one side. Yeah. This is how much is coming off. And this is what's taking it off. Yeah. Good luck with that. I didn't know buying a PS2 TV would be this much work, to be honest. So, we decided to just go old school. Okay, so, moment of truth. I'm blaming you if it don't work. Not my fault. <laughs> Slide him in. I'll tell you what, like a glove. Look at that. Like a job in the tank. No movement. Perfect, so the TV is gonna be able to angle there. Right, so now, we need to get the plug socket coming out, don't we? Okay, so this is all done. This works an absolute treat. Uh, before I put the PS2 TV in here, complete the look, get my whole command center vision brought to reality, uh, I'm just gonna take the father-in-law back home. He's assured me that there's a brand new charity shop mega store opened as well, so obviously we're gonna have to check that out on the way, right? Wow, okay, I did not expect that. Um, video game finds come when you least expect them, right? Um, okay, so before that, the PS2 TV, um, it's pretty much set up, ready to go. There's just a couple of other tweaks I need to do. Um, and then I'm gonna show you guys it in all its glory, the full command center sort of 
um, style display that I've had in my mind for weeks now. So we're going to get to that shortly. But I think I mentioned to you guys that uh, the father-in-law, which is the chap we've just seen helping me with the PS2 TV, he said to me that there's a, a big charity shop superstore open near him. So I thought, well, we might as well go when I drop him off. So we went, loaded the car up with the tools and everything and headed off. And like I say, it was so unexpected. Uh, I actually forgot to take my wallet. I forgot to take my phone. I was woefully unequipped. Uh, we loaded the car, jumped straight in and went. Uh, it was about 10 minutes into the journey. I thought, I forgot um, all my stuff, basically. And I thought, it'd be all right, don't matter. We'll go anyway. Um, you don't expect to find stuff like this. So uh, if the footage you've just seen of the charity shop looks like it was filmed on an old iPhone, then uh, it's probably because it was. But... Um, Right, let's just get into it, because this could be one of, if not the greatest charity shop finds I've had, and we'll get into why. I've been lucky enough to have some amazing charity shop finds over the years, and I mean unbelievable. So unbelievable I don't talk about them, because for me, I've been doing this years, long before I started a YouTube channel, and uh, I never talk about some of the finds that I had that weren't recorded, because I feel like there's no evidence of it. Some of them are too good that you wouldn't believe it, right? So I just don't mention those. But even since we've been recording, we've had some fantastic finds. Um, in terms of monetary value, the best find we had was probably that Wii U bundle that we had, I think, last year. I think it spent, what, 30 quid? There was like a £400 value in it. Um, like individual items, we had that uh, Dragon Ball Z, that DVD box set thing. I think it was like uh, one quite sought after by the anime guys. It was like a Japanese dub or something. And that um, two pound return, like eighty quid or something, on eBay. Um, so that was a fantastic find. We recently had that Lego find that was really good. So yeah, we've had some really, really good charity shop finds. But this is right up there, and it's a um, not just one, but various. And like I say, this charity shop is pretty much brand new. So I think these games hadn't been sat there for long. Um, you can tell it was new because I've never walked to a charity shop and seen a live performer <laughs> before now. Um, but anyway, let's just get into it, right? Uh, let's start. So the first thing I picked up was a DVD. There was quite a lot of box sets and stuff as well as the games. Now, there's a couple that probably were a little bit of value in them, but not really worth picking up. So the first one I picked up was Only Fools and Horses, the complete edition. Absolute classic show, right? I found a few different collections. There's various different ones of these. I found a big one on the channel not long ago, you might remember. Um, but yeah, £5 paid uh, for this one. CEX are giving £15 voucher, so I mean, you can't go wrong, right? It's brand new sealed, there's no issues of any discs missing or anything like that. This has got all the episodes, Christmas specials and everything, so that's a decent start. But just bear with me. We're going in sort of like a reverse order now with the games, right? So, the first one, nothing special at all, there's actually no value in this one. Uh, and that is Splinter Cell Conviction Shadow Edition. Now, the reason I bought this, uh, I already have the Collector's Edition of this game. But I just picked it up because um, in the Shadow Edition, I didn't know if mine was the Shadow Edition. I was there, I was just kind of like picking games up. I thought, oh, I don't have that, so I'll pick that up. So, uh, yeah, that was the first one. And uh, from here on out, they are pretty good finds. So, next game that caught my eye was a fantastic game, Fight Night Champion. I've been sort of petitioning for this game to make a comeback, right? I absolutely love Fight Night Champion. The story mode on this is probably as good as the story mode you'll find on any sports game in video game history. I absolutely love this game. Uh, and this returns £4 currently. Um, £4 voucher on this one. So, yeah, uh, well worth picking up. As you can see, they've got a £2 price sticker on them. But we'll get to that. And the next one is a game that I had no sort of like history with. I didn't really have any knowledge of it. But I knew as soon as I saw it, it's not one you see often. And it's probably going to be worth picking up. And on the PlayStation 3 again, that is Family Guy back to the multiverse. So this is an action adventure third person shooter developed by Heavy Iron Studios in 2012. It includes the episode Road to the Multiverse and it's a continuation of the Big Bang Theory episode uh, which features Stewie's evil half brother. This game sadly has got poor reviews because I think it reads really well. I enjoyed that episode of Family Guy. Um, playing it as a first person shooter seems really, a third person shooter sorry, seems really interesting. The graphics look exactly like the show but yeah, the, uh, the critics weren't kind on this one at all. Metacritic, it's sitting at 39, and I looked at a couple of reviews that were very damning of this one. Uh, but a great find. Um, definitely worth picking up. This has got £12 worth of trading currently. So, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to leave that sitting there, that's for sure. And then, uh, the next two are, like, really nice. So we're stepping up a level now. 
This is a game which, I'm going to be honest, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say I didn't even know this existed. Um, and you see why I'm embarrassed to say that, because it's Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Now I must have seen this PS3 version numerous times, hundreds of times throughout my game hunts, but it just never sort of sunk in with me that San Andreas was on the next generation of consoles. It never sort of occurred to me. Um, but yeah, this is actually quite an expensive game, considerably more expensive than the PS2 version. So this has got £16 trading on it. Um, if this was the Xbox 360 version, I'd probably think about adding it to my collection. Sadly, the Xbox 360 release of this, I think it only came out in classics form. Uh, and I'm not really adding classics to my collection. I'm trying to get just the standard copies for my Xbox 360 collection. But uh, yeah, a really nice find. Uh, as I say, a great game. One that I wasn't even aware was on this generation of console. And another nice bit of trading at £16 trading value. And clearly these games couldn't have been sat there long because anybody will know that there's value in some of these, right? And then this next one is... The, probably the highest value game, individual game, I've found in a charity shop in a long time. I've been a huge advocate for charity shop hunting on this channel. Um, you know, you, you could quote me numerous times throughout my tenure on YouTube where I'm saying, charity shops aren't dead, you've just got to hunt. I'm out every single day hunting and every time you go past one, have a look. The more you hunt, the more you'll find and all that stuff. And I stand by that, but admittedly, by my own volition, in the last 12 to 18 months, it's definitely got harder. It is slimmer pickings. I am finding fewer and far between video games and charity shops. More and more people are telling me they're putting them on eBay or they're using We Buy Any Books or quoting CEX or just putting outlandish prices on them. But so you can still find them out there. That's that's for sure. Uh, and all the principles I aforementioned do apply. The more you hunt, the more you'll find. And Yeah, so um, I found a copy of PlayStation 3's Deadly Premonition, the Director's Cut. So this was originally a 2010 open world survival horror game developed by Access Games. This is the 2012 release, the director's cut. You play as an FBI agent investigating the murder of an 18 year old woman which bears similarities to a host of murders across the country. Um, very average ratings on this one, sort of 7, 7.5s across the board. I'm not a huge survival horror guy so it's not something that's ever sort of um, come into my thinking or I've not really paid much attention to it. Uh, as I say, apparently the um, director's cut just sort of corrected some of the issues from the first game. Um, I think there was a few sort of like a bit buggy. But uh, yeah, um, really nice game to find because this is I currently got uh, a decent trading at CEX of £21. They actually sell this for £32, which is crazy, right? And now we get to the crazy bit. So bear with me on this one. <clears throat> so everything that you see that I've picked up now trades in for a voucher of £68. CEX sell all of this for £112.50. So, I mean, that's a good uh, amount, right? But here's where it gets, like, crazy. So, as I said, I forgot my wallet. So I said to the father-in-law, um, would you mind grabbing these for me? I'll go and get the car. We better to park further down. I'll come up, pull up outside, because he bought a couple of items, some Lego and stuff. Um, so I said, I'll come round and pick you up. He said, all right, sound. So I've gone, done that, he's paid, I've come back, I've picked him up. And then as I'm getting close to dropping him off, I said to him, oh, I'll send you that £15. And then he sort of said to me, no, it can't be £15, because the total only came to whatever the total came to. When we looked at the receipt, these games, they charged 20 pence each. Guys, five games, <laughs> one pound. Unbelievable, right? I don't know if that, I said to him, I don't know what's going on. I don't know, we tried to sort of work it out in our minds. We didn't know if it was an opening special offer. We didn't know if it was like a DVD price that they put through. We didn't know if they'd made a mistake with a decimal point and charged 20 pence instead of two pound. We don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, unbelievable. Uh, 20 pence each. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I don't really know what to say at that, right? And here's why I think it's one of my greatest ever charity shop finds, because this was charged at £5. And if you take the DVD set away and you just concentrate on the games, this £1 spent would cost you £82.50 at CEX. So, I mean, that's some return, right? Uh, roughly £53 trading I'll get for these. A couple of these are going to go in my collection, by the way. But yeah, to trade them in would be £53. From £1. That doesn't happen very often. Um, 
so I mean what can you do right um, <laughs> you just have to take it smile uh, and be thankful that on this day it worked out well uh, I will go back to that charity shop obviously when you have such success um, I'll go back and the conscious will probably get the better of me I will probably have a conversation and explain sort of what happened I think I've got the receipt somewhere and uh, I'll sort of explain and if it was a mistake or whatever then I'll happily pay the £10 I was supposed to pay for these games but yeah man um, just yeah like I say it just happens when you least expect it so if there's a message in any of this make sure you go to every single charity shop that you come across or hear about or drive in past because you just never know which one is going to be the one which um, becomes very fruitful so yeah absolutely buzzing with that uh, and they're the kind of fans that keep you going right in this charity shop haunting game you can have days weeks where you're going out in the rain in the cold spending fuel with very little success. I mean, I don't show you guys all the chat shops I go in, I don't find anything. Um, so yeah, they're the sort of fires that bore you up and keep you going, but um, yeah. Right, so I'm looking at my PS2 TV now. Uh, it's been a long time coming, right, to get this thing set up. We're all ready now, let's do it. I'm trying very hard not to get distracted. <laughs> all these parcels that need opening. We'll get to that, it's PS2 TV time, finally. Um, so yeah, we're all set up. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's been put on these runners now. It's working absolutely perfectly. Look, so I can pull it out and uh, we get a nice distance on it. Um, all I then simply do is just angle the television. Uh, I'll show you that shortly. And then I've got the perfect view from this seating area here. I put a double extension in the back because um, I've got my Amazon Fire Stick hooked up to the TV as well. So uh, theoretically, uh, if I was able to watch football and any other channel uh, on my Fire Stick, I could have that on this screen here, uh, which would then free up the larger TV for modern gaming. Uh, so what I would essentially be able to do is modern game here and watch football there. When I, previously, I've sort of watched sport and TV on this one exclusively. But we'll get to all the different TVs and functionality shortly, um, because like I said, I'm going to get everything set up and... Uh, we're finally going to take a look at this command center right idea that I've been sort of touting for a few weeks now. Ah, command center activated. So, we have got the PS2 TV currently running R-Type Final. Uh, and like I say, I've now hooked this up as well to my Amazon Fire Stick, so this can potentially play any um, television, basically, through the Amazon Fire Stick, any streaming services. We've then got the 55 inch Sony uh, OLED. This is currently running Android Duo Nose 2. Then we've got the 32 inch uh, Bang & Olufsen DVD Avant, currently playing Thunder Force 3. Um, yeah, what can I say about this thing? So this is all hooked up to just my retro. So this is primarily used for, um, well, it was PS2 before I got the PS2 TV. But it also has um, Super Nintendo and Mega Drive. That's primarily what I use it for. Although GameCube is also hooked up to this. And then I've got this monitor here, which um, I often use in Tate mode like this. Tate mode, Tate mode, whatever you want to call it. This is currently running Crisis Wing. Um, and as I say, this gives me a lot of versatility because I can play it in Tate mode. But also, it can be moved, it can spin it around, I can literally put it here, I can lie down on the sofa and play it, I can do a lot of different things with this. Also, uh, with any number of these systems, apart from this older one, um, they all got USB slots, so I'm able to look at the various CCTV uh, throughout my property, so I can sort of sit here, I can have um, a CCTV uh, hook on one of these screens, so I can watch everything that's going on for security purposes, whilst I'm watching live sport, playing retro, whatever, and yeah, um... All four of these screens have a purpose. I love them all in their own way. And uh, I'm not disappointed. I've been thinking about this moment ever since I bought the PS2 TV. And now sitting here looking at it, you could probably hear the smile etched across my face, right? Through my voice. Oh man, this is, this is what kids' dreams are made of, right? I'm absolutely delighted with this. Love it.
Okay, so I've decided to come to the city of Derby. Uh, we're going to be headed to CX first. We're going to trade in um, all those charity shop finds or some of the charity shop finds, the ones that haven't been added to the game shelves. Um, close to the CX is a couple of retro video game shops as well. So, yeah, nice little quick hunt while we're here. Okay, so that was CEX Derby. Um, CEX Derby is one of the only CEXs where there could be nobody in the queue and it takes you ages to get served. It always seems to be like that. Um, thank you very much. Never any urgency, but uh, anyway, it worked out very well for me. Got two essentials, I got a nice um, steel book. So yeah, plus the vouchers, all good. So we're gonna head now to the couple of uh, retro game shops that are here. Take a look, try not to spend too much money. Let's go. I'm about halfway now, I've got about 100, so it's I'm getting harder. Is, about 200, 207 last time I was there all the time. Oh, for a while before. Oh, God, yeah, it's the sniper scope, light rifle, and shotguns. Oh, it's an Xbox, of course, it is. Yeah, There's another one in there as well. A lot of this is stuff we've had like stuck in storage. So you've had it since new and then? Yeah, they've probably still got original prices on as well, but I need to change a lot of them, because a lot of them have changed. Yeah, I bet. Especially some of the PS2 stuff, but that's decent. Sealed now. Afro Samurai? It's, it's 25, 30 quid, I think it was when I checked. Yeah. I just put it on eBay. Yeah, I've got that. Naruto. This, I had American sealed, and it sold in about 30 seconds on eBay. Wow. I literally put it on. It's crazy what bid, people want, isn't it? And won. Probably got like five on it or something. Five, yeah. Let me just check what it's right. And then I was starting again. It's just. Yep. I get to live it through here now. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that, mate.
Well, this turned out really well. Um, very unexpected finds. Uh, just found a nice, quite rare Super Nintendo game as well. So yeah, always a good day when that happens. Let's get back to the 3.0 and take a look. Okay, back in the 3.0. And uh, yeah, uh, like I said, I had to nip into Derby. And uh, I didn't expect to find as much good stuff as I did. So the first stop was CEX. Um, Derby CEX is always eventful, shall we say. It took me forever to get served. Um, and then when I finally did, I asked if I could look at the retro. Um, for some reason, all the retros in the drawer hidden out of the way. And I did ask why, and they said, oh, we don't have room to display it. And you look at the fact that they've got 400 iPhone 10s on display, and you just think, sure, retro brings people to the shop. But I mean, what do I know? They probably make more money off mobile phones, right? But it does seem a strange setup. As you've probably seen in the footage, I reached in to pick up and look at one of the games, and she snatched it so quick. They're so scared that people are going to grab it and run away, but that probably comes through um, having experienced that, I guess, with a city centre store. I'm sure that kind of thing happens quite a lot, but uh, yeah, always an interesting experience, but I did find a couple of bits. Um, again, not the most user-friendly, but everything's kind of behind the counter. Even this cheap game that I picked up, it's a steelbook. Um, it actually says £4 on it, but the price has since been reduced to 3 so I think this was a bargain, but yeah, even this £3 game was behind the counter. I think probably all steel books are put behind there, again, probably for fears of theft. But the first one that I picked up was Tom Clancy's End War on the 360. Comes in this really nice steel book, and it's in really nice condition as well. This is a Ubisoft developed 2008 real-time strategy war game. Uh, it's quite well received. If you look at now, I think it's currently got like a 9 out of 10 on Steam, although... PC gaming probably lends itself more to sort of real-time strategy games. Not really my kind of game, but like I say, for £3, there's no way I was going to leave this nice steelbook there. And yeah, another one for my Xbox 360 steelbook collection. So yeah, really happy with that. I don't think I've ever seen this one before. Decent, decent start that. And then from there, I went to Mobile Game Exchange. And I've said the last few times I've been there how much improved that shop is. They've always had good stock, but the prices used to be astronomical. But in recent times... I found the customer service to be spot on. I found the pricing to be decent. I found that they're willing to do a deal. And as you may have seen on the footage, he pulled out these boxes from the back because I originally asked about essentials and he said, oh, I think I've got a few of my sealed boxes. I can go and get them if you like. I said, like, go for it, mate. Um, so he pulled out these boxes of all these sealed games. There's no essentials that I needed, but there was one game that caught my eye. This game is actually being sold at CX for £10 and he gave me a sealed copy of it for £7. So, I mean, I wasn't going to grumble at that. And that is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. So this one's a 2013 action adventure game developed by Platinum Studios. I was never quite sure as to what this game was. Um, it turns out it is actually a spin-off of the Metal Gear Solid series. With it having Metal Gear in the title, I always assumed that was the case, but never really looked much into it. I was never really... Um, a avid player of the Metal Gear Solid games. I played the first few, I think I played the PlayStation 1 games, I played one of the PS2 games, and then yeah, never played any of the later releases, so this one sort of passed me by. But this is a spin-off, as I say, it's set four years after the events of Metal Gear Solid 4, and you play as Raiden, uh, but this one is more primarily sword-based combat as opposed to the guns of the mainline series. Uh, and this was originally supposed to be a Kojima uh, games, but I think they had some experience um, so bad experiences in the development side, or I don't think they could quite get to grips with the sword play. So a couple of years later, this was taken up by Platinum Games, and I think probably for the betterment of the game, right? Um, it's very much a Platinum Games now, and when you look at it, it has that kind of aesthetic to it, and it's very well received by critics. There's a lot of 9 and 10s uh, throughout the board, and yeah, it just looks like a really interesting game, and like I say, very much a Platinum uh, games game if you like but to get a nice sealed xbox 360 game that i don't already own for a mere seven pounds very happy with that and like i say just generally uh, my last few experiences of going into that shop have been positive um and really happy with that because it's not too far from me so to have a decent retro shop that i enjoy going in uh it's fantastic right and then from there i of course went to retro world so all the shops are really close together to so the cex I did pick up another couple of games from CX as well, sorry, but they will be for Wednesday's video. So make sure you tune into Wednesday's video. Um, um, then you've got, of course, Mobile Game Exchange, and then you've got Retro World. So they're all within five minutes of each other. I tend to park at the Matalan, and then you've got everything within a very small radius. You don't have to go into the busy city centre. 
You don't have to dodge spice heads and charity muggers. <laughs> You can just go and get your video games and go home, and that's what I'm all about at this time of life, right? Um, so yeah, I was looking in uh, Retro World, and I was looking in the Super Nintendo section, and there was one game that caught my eye. I've seen this game out and about on my travels a few times, but it's always been one of them games that holds a high price. I've never seen it for less than £90. This one didn't have the manual, and they had it listed at 50 um, but I was able to negotiate it down to 40 which is a fantastic price, because at CX currently, this game with no manual is a £100 game. So to get it for 40 was absolutely fantastic. And that game is Ranma Half. I think it's, that's how you say it, right? Ranma Half. So as you can probably tell by me buttering the title, um, I don't really know much about this, but it's based on a manga and anime series. Uh, it's known as Ranma Half Hard Battle in America. And it's essentially a 2D fighting game. Um, it's got three different playable modes. You've got a one-player tournament, two-player competitive mode, and a team challenge mode. It seems quite a strange release to me that this was ever released in PAL or uh, European countries because, yeah, I don't think this uh, series of anime got much of a push in this country. Certainly nothing that I ever noticed growing up. Um, but yeah, glad it did. But for that reason, it's become quite an obscure, therefore expensive game. The box art is beautiful on this, as you would expect with something that's sort of, you know, come from a manga. So yeah, really happy to add this. I always say any day I can add Super Nintendo to my collection is a good day. But a day when I can get it for such a good price and go for the full set of Super Nintendo games. Obviously, where I can, I want the manuals. But I'm all about value. And if I can get a game for like 60% of its price, 40% uh, of its price, sorry, 60% off because it doesn't have a manual, I'll take that all day long. Once I've got all the boxed games displayed in my full SNES collection, then I can start digging into what manuals I still need. But until then, it's not a priority. Um, yeah, just really happy to be adding this to my collection. And from what I understand from the reviews and gameplay I've seen, it's quite a simplistic one-on-one -on -one fighter. It doesn't have the same amount of directional inputs needed as uh, sort of Street Fighter and other games of this genre. But yeah. Um, just a nice one and I think this will actually find its way onto the Super Nintendo wall. I do have a one-on-one -on -one fighter section and yeah, I think this artwork needs to be displayed and yeah, just a, a nice little trip out, right? To come away with some real nice games and like I say, also there's other couple of games that we got from CEX that we'll get to on Wednesday. Uh, really happy with that. I've got these boxers staring at me. I can feel them looking at me. I've got so much stuff that I need to get into but I think before we tackle those boxers, I want to try and finish Spec Ops The Line. I played it again last night. I think there's only a couple of chapters left. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to make a cup of tea, get comfy, and I'll try and finish Spec Ops The Line. And then we're going to dig into all these parcels. Right, okay, so it's time to uh, open some of these parcels that I've been stacking up over the last <laughs> couple of days. Uh, wow. Oh, that's the first casualty of war. Right, okay. So, I think I'm probably going to need sit down. No, I'm probably going to need to get my uh, Stanley knife. Uh. Okay. I think we're about ready. So. I mentioned earlier in the vlog um, how on the Ghetto Gang Discord server there's a lot of us that are sort of helping each other out with our collections. Uh, especially essentials. There's, a good four or five of us are on there, we're all hunting for essentials and there's no definitive list so we're all sort of helping each other out with what does exist, doesn't exist and I'm going to talk about it more down the line but we are trying to compile a definitive list for everybody of the essentials that are actually out there because none of the lists are very good that are on uh, Google or anything like that. So a lot of these are from Ghetto Gang members. I hope there's notes in these because obviously there's a lot of stuff here 
I don't remember off the top of my head exactly who sent what, um, but if there aren't notes, I'll try and piece it together below um, so everyone can get the, you know, the credit and thank yous that they deserve. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's a whole mixed bag in here, so I'm just going to crack on with it. This, I think, was the first to arrive. This was sent by a special delivery, and I think I know who this is from. But uh, let's get into it and see if there's a note. I think I remember this. Was a surprise. Let's see. Okay, so got a pair of little Adidas trainers by the looks of it. I'm a size 10, mate, so these aren't going to work. Okay, we've got a bag, something inside that, and another bag. Is there a note? Yes, there's a note. Okay, so let's read this. Some of this is to be read on camera, some isn't. Hi Callum, hope you enjoyed the gift. In keeping with your white console collection, thought I don't... Right, okay, so I don't want to read this. Right, I'm not going to read anymore, because I think it spoilers what's ahead. This is from who I thought it was from, so this is from Tony. Uh, Tony Wisbit, he's got a YouTube channel, very active on YouTube as well. Uh, he does like a lot of Let's Plays, CEX tours, all that kind of thing, so I'll post a link below to Tony's channel, go and check him out. Um, another Ghetto Gang member, very active on the Discord and, you know, very helpful, uh, as we all are on the Discord, in sort of helping people out with their collections and regularly frequenting CEX stores, so... Right, okay, let's see what's in here then. I don't know whether to go with the big one first or the smaller one. Let's go with the smaller one. Okay, so this is a control pad for what I believe is an Evercade. So does that mean... There's an Evercade in here, right. Okay, so that'll be what he meant, because I read the sentence that says about the all-white collection. Very, very kind of you, Tony. I've never delved into the Evercade world before. Let's go through the note then now. Like I say, it does say that some of it's personal, so I'm only going to read what comes before that. In keeping with your white console collection, thought I'd donate this, and then it says Evercade VS to your amazing games room. I have three of these, long story. Uh, so I feel it's going to a good home. Apologies for the lack of wires, but I've seen your drawers, so I'm sure you have some. Uh, come join the Evercade collectors and indulge in the collector's disease once again. Massive shout out to Tony. Um, yeah, that the uh, the Discord we're on is a bit of a uh, enablers, right? Everyone's like enabling people, like, go on, you might as well stop collecting them. Every time we find something, oh, you might as well go for a full set. Uh, not that I need any encouragement. Uh, but yeah, very kind of you. Um, so for based on what you said, yeah, it just looks like this standard connections. So I should be able to find something for that. And you bang on Tony, mate. The white console. I'm sure I can make this fit. And <sighs> this is a great gift, but I think you know what this means, right? This is going to end up me probably buying every Evercade game ever released now. Uh, but yeah, very, very kind of you. Make sure you're checking out Tony's channel. Once again, there'll be a link below. Thank you very much, my friend. I will, of course, message you straight after I finish filming, but... Yeah, that's a nice start, right? Um, get O Gang in the house. Right, let's see what's next then. Um, right, okay. Ah, yes, 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 yes. I believe this has come from Craig. I remember chatting to him about it. There's no note in here. But I remember him saying that he had upgraded. So another friend of mine friend of the channel. Ah, there is a note. The Guna Ghetto. Good time to be a Guna right now as well, right? At least until we play the quarterfinal, but I'm sure we'll get to that. Hi Callum, just a token of appreciation for your great content over the last few years. Followed since the early days and all your videos, vlogs and investments have cost me a lot of money. Uh, thanks for keeping us all entertained. Onwards to the next milestone. I don't even want to read this next bit. Before he signed off, Craig has put, you'll never walk alone. So there you go, Craig. I've said it out on camera for you. Uh, massive shout out to Craig. Uh, much appreciated. I remember him saying to me that he had upgraded his version. So he'd bought a version of uh, Bugs Money Double Trouble on the Mega Drive with a manual. And um, he wanted to pass it on to me, his version that didn't have a manual. So much appreciated. Uh, you don't play the manuals. Uh, I've just been speaking about that. I can kind of live without them. And it's very kind of you. Blue Spine Mega Drive game. And uh, yeah, I've got plans to uh, see Craig very soon. So I'll have to 
help you out in return, my friend. But yeah, um, I'm getting a lot of blue spines now. At one point, I didn't even have a full shelf, but now we've got a lot of that. Like, there's like a big overflow of blue spines. So yeah, fantastic. Massive shout out to you and much appreciated. Right, what's next on this journey? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, should we go for the smaller one? It's like Christmas, isn't it? Um, let's get into it. I just want to take the time to say, um, I mean, whilst this isn't every week, I don't have like this many parcels to open that are largely gifts. I just want to say that like, I don't ask for anything and I don't want anybody to send me anything. So if you're watching this, um, don't send me anything. The fact that you're watching is more than enough. Supporting the channel via watching. Uh, this is largely, not so much fan mail, this is largely people that I've got friendships with, that I've met through this hobby, I've met through the channel, that I just talk to on a regular basis, both via the Ghetto Gang Discord or via Instagram, or whatever it means it may be, and yeah, I'll sort of send them things in return, I've got a couple of parcels down there waiting to go, and so yeah, I just thought it was important to say that, don't send me anything, I've got more than enough stuff, right? Right, okay, so on to the next. What have we got in here? We have got... Oh, hello. Okay, so I remember, yes, I remember now. No note. No notes. I like to keep the note in with the game so that whenever I go back in the future and I can open game, I can remember who it was, or how they sent it me, the sentiments and everything. Right, okay, so there's no note in here, but I'll be putting the name of the chap uh, on the bottom now. I remember having the conversation. I remember he reached out to me and said, I think you still need this for your collection, which I do. Massive shout out. This is a really nice one for me to tick off the list. Uh, Red Dead Game of the Year edition. Features, obviously, Red Dead and the Undead Nightmare. Can you see the stand in? Uh, kind of, just over there, right? Uh, and then he also said to me, I don't know if you'd be interested in anything else, but I'm also getting rid of this. And it was a sealed copy of Call of Duty Black Ops. I think he said he found it in a drawer. So yeah, much appreciated. Massive shout out to you. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Ah, the essentials, man. Stay tuned. We've got a lot of essentials content coming up. Right, okay, next, next, next. Where's my knife? Where's my knife? Where's my knife? <clears throat> Here's my knife. Call that a knife. Right, okay. Um, right, okay, so yeah, on to the next one, right. Okay, let's get into this one. Okay, so this has come from Ghetto Gang member Wilson, uh, another avid, avid CEX hunter, honestly, like, some of you guys put me to shame like with some of the CX stores, the charity shop finds, especially uh, north of the border up in Scotland. Some of the finds you guys are getting up there is, yeah, uh, it leaves me a little bit envious, I've got to say. So, um, knew about these. These are ones that he'd found for me um, in CEX, and I also sent him a voucher over today, actually, because he found another game for me um, in a local CX, another essential, but we'll get to that once it arrives. But yeah, massive, massive shout out to you, mate. So the first one is The Fight. Just a one pound game, but just obviously not one I'd come across thus far. So this is like a PS Move game. Um, as you can see on the back. Happy with that. And Fallout 3, Game of the Year edition. So I think that's all of the Fallout games now for me. Um, I think that's all three, I think, Fallout games on the Essentials range. I'm gonna slowly getting through this collection, guys. Like I said, there's going to be a lot more to say about the Accentuals collection in upcoming weeks. And then, wow. Okay, so he knows I'm a hip hop fan. He sent me this sealed copy of Della Soul Three Feet High and Rising cassette tape. Much appreciated. I mean, sealed cassette tape on the orange, original orange cassette as well. Massively appreciate that. Thank you very much, my friend. Okay. On to the next. What we got? Right, we've got this one and this bigger one. We're going for the bag. We're going for the bag? Let's go for the bag. Okay, I think there's a note. Is there a note? There is a note, okay. <clears throat> Good morning, as promised, some PS1 bangers. Miles better off on display than hidden away in the loft. Be, saying, be safe, be seen, Phil. AKA Co Korea from YouTube. Um, sorry about the bubble wrap. No need to apologize for the bubble wrap, my friend. Yeah, I was chatting to Phil. Uh, Phil uh, messaged me, said, I'm thinning out my PS2 and PS1 collection. And um, 
you know, is there anything that you want? And there was a couple of PS2 games that I wanted to buy from him. And uh, I think it came to light that he wasn't really ready to let them go just yet. I think maybe the ones that I wanted to buy off him were probably the ones that he liked the most kind of thing. So I said, look, just hold on to it for a bit longer. If you don't want to sell, I don't need to have seller's remorse. But what he did say was, I'll send you a couple of the PS1 games that you don't have in your collection because, you know, I don't want these and they're not in the best of condition. So it was very kind of him to send these across. And if you do change your mind about those PS2 games, Phil, let me know. And uh, well, hopefully we'll do a deal on those. But yeah, uh, these are a couple of PS1 games um, that he wanted to add to my All Killer No Filler shelf, which has now become All Killer No Filler shelves. Plural. Uh, I'm thinking as well, actually, as I sit here now looking at the PS2 TV, there's a section above it that I could potentially maybe get another PS1 row in if it'd fit. I might have to modify the shelving slightly so I could have PS1 games above and below the TV. It won't affect, obviously, the way in which it pulls out. So that's maybe something we'll get to down the line as and when we need uh, more space for PlayStation 1 because I've really got the PlayStation 1 bug, right? Ever since I've sold the PS1, that is. Uh, okay, so we have got Bomberman. Uh, the Value series, not pl I don't think I've played Bomberman on the PS1. Um, so I've got them all on the Super Nintendo, I've got a Mega Drive version. And I think that was pretty much like my extent of playing Bomberman games growing up. I think it was all sort of on the 16-bit generation. So it'll be interesting to see how Bomberman plays on the PS1. Uh, another classics, uh, Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Another one that I have on the Super Nintendo, but one would assume it plays uh, better on the PlayStation 1. And uh, what I like about the PS1 classics as opposed to like, the Platinum is they look absolutely the same on uh, the Spine Art. And he was saying to me, oh, mate, like you don't want this. It's battered. Like, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, and I'm like, honestly, my sort of um, the way I view condition of games is very different to a lot of the people. My standards are so low. Having a few cracks and that in the case, that, that doesn't bother me at all. The Spine looks great. Um, so, yeah, much appreciated, my friend. And then the last one, Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. So this was a game that I think I had on the Dreamcast. I never got around to playing it prior to selling my Dreamcast collection. So uh, yeah, massive shout out to you for hooking me up with these games. The all killer no filler shelves are growing. And I think these are all worthy of those titles, right? So yeah, much appreciated, my friend. Thank you very much. Right, and that moves us on to the last one. Okay, so there's a few... Right, okay, 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 I know what's going on in here. So this, I think, is from my friend Kingsley. Let's have a look. Hi Callum, hope you're doing well. This package found its way to you. I just want to thank you for all the content you provide to us ghetto gang members on a daily basis here on YouTube and Discord. I use your videos to put my mind at ease for a while when times are hard. I also used your essentials collect videos to start my own essentials collection. I'm up to 64 myself. I know. <laughs> Kingsley is on it, but he's been a massive help to me. Massive shout out to Kingsley because uh, he's really dug deep into a lot of the PS3 Essentials. He's found games that uh, were never on any Essentials list I'd found thus far. He's um, eradicated some, some which we've come to find out never existed. So yeah, me and Kingsley together are going to try and team up and make the definitive list so that then everyone will be able to collect them more easily going forward and they'll know what to look out for. Um, enjoy, I'm not going to say what it is, and there's a few extras included, regards Kingsley, top man Kingsley is, okay, so the first of all, the one in which I knew about, was this, so he reached out to me, and um, he said he's interested in this, and I said, mate, I, I like the franchise, it looks great, but um, take it CEX, and uh, get yourself some credit for your PS3 Essentials collection. And he said, to be honest, mate, they only give the standard price. So they don't give, this is a collector's edition. He said they only give the standard sort of base rate for the game. So like, I wouldn't want to do that. So I said, that's fair enough, much appreciated. Um, so he sent this across to me. And uh, this is, yeah, beautiful, man. Really happy with this. Thank you, Kingsley. So this is King of Fighters 15. And it comes in this nice collector's edition. So I've got um, King of Fighters 13 on the 360. And it's just a beautiful game. Like visually, it's such a stunning game. And... I always, it's one of them games that's always eating away at the back of my mind that I haven't put much time into it. I intended to when I got it, but you know what life's like, busy. And fire's one of the things you kind of have to commit to, right? You have to learn the mechanics and stuff, and I've just never got to it, but yeah. Uh, wow, look at that. Look how stunning that artwork is. King of Fighters, <laughs> love that. 
Absolutely love that. This is going to take pride of place. It's going to fit well in my PS4 collection because it is pretty much all just big box and collector's edition things. Uh, really nice art cards in here. I've uh, got the original soundtrack CD, the game, an art book, all sort of stuff that you'll be seeing in overlay now. And yeah, really, really happy with that. Massive shout out to you, Kingsley. Strange that CX don't list this um, as its own thing, but I think we're finding more and more with CEX that they are listing things. I'm noticing a lot more with steel books now that they're getting their own separate listing at a slightly inflated price. Okay, so I don't know what else he's put in here. Uh, we have got Sonic Heroes on the OG Xbox. I'm not an OG Xbox collector. Uh, I'll probably pass this on to somebody that will um, be able to enjoy it more than myself. Um, <clears throat> Wolfenstein, The New Order. Again, PS4 big box, so that'll fit in well. I thought, do I already have this? One second, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Yeah, I already have this. Um, so what I'll do is I'll do this as a giveaway. Oh, I'm gone. So this is just the box. Okay, so I won't do it as a giveaway. Appreciate you sending it while I'm away, my friend, but I do already have this with the game. Uh, this is just the big box version. I'll have a look at the price of this though in CEX. Now potentially when I'm out and about, I'll add the game to this and then we'll do this as a giveaway on the channel so one of you guys can uh, get this for your PS4 collections. Uh, and then the last thing in here, what's this? It says Bethesda on the back. It's a Vault Boy bobblehead. Here he is, Vault Tech. Vault Boy Bobblehead, I'm sure I could find room for this guy somewhere here in the free point. Now, I do like little sort of shelf fillers like that. And yeah, appreciate Kingsley, man, top man. Um, I'm going to be in touch. Well, we're in regular contact anyway. But uh, yeah, wow, awesome. What a haul. Um, and it just, yeah, just once again, uh, thank you. Firstly, thank you to everybody. Secondly, um, don't send me anything. I've got more than enough stuff. Like I said, these are deals that have been arranged with fellow friends and collectors that we've been communicating with each other over time. Um, you know, I'll be sending them stuff back in return. And yeah, uh, don't send me anything. I don't need anything else. <laughs> I'm fast running out of room as it is, right? But uh, massive, massive shout out to everybody that did send something. I'll, uh, I'll be in contact anyway before this video goes live. And I think with all this stuff and all the other stuff we've added this week, it's got to be time for a montage, right? Montage.
And after the hard work of the montage, ah, the rewards. Yeah. Okay, so with a full stomach and a tidy games room, that's going to do it for this week's Ghetto Vlog. And man, what a week it's been. The Lego convention seems a long time ago, right? And uh, yeah, I just want to give a massive shout out. We've had a lot of new viewers and new subscribers to the channel lately. And I feel like this week's vlog pretty much epitomizes what we do here on a weekly basis, right? Finding games, making changes to the games room, all that good stuff in between and yeah really enjoyed this week hope you guys have enjoyed coming along for the journey with me uh, we'll do it all again next week so if you are new here make sure you hit that subscriber button i've also got the giveaway coming next week of the uh snk mini geo pocket so we'll get to that we're going to be doing that for alzheimer's research uk a fantastic course so yeah don't miss out on that one and of course we've got wednesday's video dropping which yeah I'm looking forward to it as well. We're going to be highlighting some very rare games that are new to the collection. So, as always, play your games, keep it retro. I'll see you in a bit. Take care. You're watching the Retro Getro. Ghetto. Ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>